right. Welcome to the special episode with the Emotion Code Divas, Dana J. Smithers and Helena Jenikin. And also we have some guests today. Um, as often happens, you can uh, plan ahead and hope that everything works out fine. But uh, one of our divas had a computer situation, another one, something else came up. So that's just life and that's just how it goes. So uh, my name is Dana J. Smithers and this is a special episode of Sexy, Healthy, Wealthy Women. So we are all, as you can see, we all got to have our emotion code books up. We are all, all <laughs> exactly, thank you, Vanna, <laughs> certified emotion code practitioners. And uh, Ellie and I just call ourselves emotion code divas because it, it just seemed like a, a great name. So we've got our other divas with us today. So, and uh, Permelia has, you can even get the app, um, uh, emotion code app on your phone and do emotion code work from there if you need to. So welcome, ladies. And we have a great show today. We're going to be talking about um, what sexy, healthy, wealthy women feel like and what it means to each of us. And um, while I work mainly with uh, women entrepreneurs, I'm finding that regardless of the age, um, regardless of what we're working on, Often things do come up with an emotion code session around sex and relationships, around health, around abundance and those sorts of things. So we thought it'd be really um, important and special to, since our mission is to educate, inspire, uh, heal and release trapped emotions, that this would be a good show uh, for uh, a lot of women and certainly pass it on to um the few good men that we have out there that uh, love what we're doing and support us in doing this. So Helena, I would like to kick off the show with, um, since you were the one that uh, got me inspired about doing this and I was actually at an event that you put on. So tell us about that and how this whole sexy, sexy, healthy, wealthy women thing got going. Excellent. Thank you, Dana. Um, back in about 2011, I was uh, coordinating lots of corporate events and decided to do a few of my own events. And one of the things that was near and dear to my heart is, as you can tell from some of the past Emotion Code Diva shows, is nutrition. I have a uh, health food store background. I've worked with nutrients for a long time, and I recognized how important that um, the proper nutrition was for women to feel vibrant, to feel healthy, to feel actually energized and and sexy. Nothing is nothing is uh, harder to be feel vibrant, but when you're feeling tired, uh, lack of energy, no sleep, um, uh, emotional up and down roller coaster. So I knew that it was important to share information on how women can feel better, healthier, and sexier um, with, uh, with uh, information. So I put an event together with seven speakers. Two of them were actual medical doctors. One of them talked about hormones and the importance of nutrients and hormones. And the other talked about the importance of choosing your life's purpose interesting she was a er doctor who wanted to commit suicide she was so stressed out and didn't know a way out she finally left the medical profession and became a flamenco dancer an internationally now recognized flamenco dancer i remember her she came yeah. out um you know hair beautiful dark hair all done up and she had that uh um, like a fan in her hair and she had this most spectacular red dress on yeah and she came out and it was just like wow and then she tells her story about her being yeah. a doctor and and all of that you just think wow how did how did she go from from there to just being so vibrant and that's what we want to talk a little bit about today but she's the one I remember the most mm -hmm. and yeah. I remember uh, Dr. Anita Tannis uh, the most because uh, she <laughs> because I didn't realize how important the information she was sharing, how important it was gonna become for me in a couple of years down the road when I started going through menopause. <laughs> right. I was like, oh yes, I remember those information about the hormones. Yeah. So it was great. That's great, thanks so much. So uh, as I said, Helena and Jenikin and I are, we call ourselves the Emotion Code Divas, but we have 
other Emotion Code Divas with us today. So I would like to welcome uh, Permelia Parham. And uh, well, I should say, um, I live in Vancouver, Helena, you're on the island. Yeah, in, thank you, Brent. Yeah, Vancouver Island, uh, close to Victoria. And Permelia, you're on the island, but you're up a little bit. Yes, um, thank you so much for inviting me to be on this special um, Emotion Code Divas show. I'm excited to be here. Uh, I'm a teacher and practitioner of vibrational healing. That teaches us how to have a balanced life through chakra balancing workshops and grounding exercises, uh, removing limiting beliefs. And of course, I am an Emotion Code certified practitioner, which I'm very excited to be. I have a wellness center here in Parksville, which is on beautiful Vancouver Island. It's just north of Nanaimo, uh, if, if you know that. And that's, yeah, Vibrational Healing is my company. Great, excellent. All right, thank you. And we're going to get talking about what the sexy, healthy, wealthy means to all of us, but I thought we'd do a quick introduction first. So, Cindy Trost, please, and tell us where you're located. Thank you so much, Dana. I am representing the USA today <laughs> with all you lovely Canadian ladies. I am in the Denver, Colorado area, and I am a law of attraction coach and also, of course, an emotion code practitioner. And I teach women entrepreneurs how to use the law of attraction to attract their ideal clients and grow their business. And then I also use the emotion code to eliminate their emotional baggage so they can actually attract what they want. Right, exactly. And uh, I, too, am a um, uh, certified law of attraction trainer. Well, you know, as women we, we, and entrepreneurs, we've, we've all gone through different paths in our lives and different stages and, and along on the journey. And, you know, each one of us has had different, uh, different jobs, different careers, things that we've done. So we've kind of taken where we're at this time in life, all of that information, um, and we probably will have a different view uh, on someone that's maybe in their 20s or 30s or 40s. Um, we, uh, we had, I had hoped to have um, Misty Anderson on uh, today. She was, she was your youngest, I think, <laughs> on the show. But just to talk about the different ages. But, um, you know, life does change. You have different feelings around what it feels like to be sexy, healthy, or wealthy. Uh, as you journey on in life, because it, for me, it certainly wasn't the same when I was in my 30s or 40s. And I, I thought it, you might want to know our, our ages, although we only have these ages because we were given them. As uh, I was listening to uh, Dr. Michael Bernard Beckwith last week, and he said, well, if you didn't ha have an age, if someone hadn't given it to you, how old would you be? So, you know, you can tell yourself you're any age, but in terms of numbers, uh, Permelia and I are both going to be 70 this year, and uh, we look fabulous. Thank you very much. <laughs> and uh, and there's reasons for that, though. There's reasons for that. And uh, Cindy is 58, and Helena is uh, 53. So we're sort of going to talk about our our experiences and and what we've gone through in life and how we've you know managed to. Um, you know, ride this roller coaster of life because that is exactly what it is. But just before uh, we get going, uh, we've got some viewers, Helena. So uh, we, we a big hello from um, Sylvia Bellini is has been a loyal follower for a very very long time. She's in London, England. She always gives us a weather report. So it's a sunny afternoon in London. Whoopee! <laughs> and we thought summer was over. So that's great. Um, so Misty, oh, there you go. So Misty just said about our age, Permelia. <laughs> okay, fine. Wow, I never would have thought that, right? And yeah, Misty Anderson is, is 39. It's, it's um, unfortunate Misty had a computer glitch. Life happens, right? Um, so she's 39. So she would have had a different perspective on what the sexy, healthy, wealthy is as well. I know she's a single mom. So, you know, we've got roles that we play as well. So all of that, that goes in there too. Uh, Sophie Giraud is watching, and can you see anybody else, Helena? Whoops, Helena, you're on mute. Go. I see Natasha Paula Samuel. Another and, loyal follower, yeah. Yes, yes, and Barb Ashcroft. Hey, Barb. Yeah. Excellent, great. Um, yeah, so 
uh, we love to give shout outs to people that are watching us too. And we're really happy if you, if you share this program. So what I'd like to do uh, right now is just um, let the viewers know what we think about sexy, healthy, wealthy. And really when you, when you peel the rose down, because that's our new symbol, forget about the onion, we're using the rose. But when you peel the rose down, there's a nice little rosebud in there, right? And, you know, when you look at a rose, you get certain feelings about it. When you look at the rose bud with all those layers taken away, there's another feeling about it. And I think, you know, I think we feel sexy or not. We feel healthy or not. And we feel wealthy or not. So these are all emotions. And this is why the, as, as all of us being certified emotion practitioners are, um, we deal with the negative emotions that people are still carrying around about, you know, I'm not, I, the sexy thing, right? A lot of people associate it just with a look. Well, it's not really just your look, it's your attitude. If, if any of you have seen the new movie, I Feel Pretty, with Amy Schumer in it, um, the gist is she's Amy, right? She's a little tad uh, overweight in her mind, a uh, bit of a mess in her life and all of those things. And sh she's exercising, she hits her head, and all of a sudden she life changes she walks in looks at herself same person same everything and she goes is it is this my body and nothing has changed except what's going on here and she goes whoa look at me and of course the other women are kind of looking at her like uh what's she seeing that we don't and that's a whole point right it's all about how do you feel and how do you see yourselves whether you know, it, it's sexy or whatever. So let's just go ahead and jump in. Familia, I'm going to start with you. So for you, and you can talk a little bit about the work that you've done as well, because I know some of your clients would have come in with, you know, mindset, um, you know, about not being sexy or healthy or wealthy or never have a relationship or they're out of sorts or all of that. So why don't you just tell us a little bit about what you think those those words mean? Well, for me, sexy, healthy, and wealthy means that I'm engaged. I'm, I don't tend to sit on the sidelines. I really like to be involved. Um, I like to contribute, and I like to help others so that they can be the best they can be. And when I'm contributing so they feel better, then that's make, that makes me feel sexy and healthy and wealthy. And I have had clients who we worked on abundance, um, you know, challenges for them, and things turned around the following week where people were receive their income increased in one week more than it had for a couple of months. Um, another client of mine, um, out of, all of a sudden, she got four new clients. Uh, so we know it works. Uh, absolutely, it definitely, definitely works. Yeah. So with for yourself, um, you know, you being 69 and going to be 70 this year, which I only discovered. Uh, when I when we got together and I was doing a talk and Barb Ashcroft uh, in uh, Parksville, Nanaimo area as well is also 69. So it was so interesting to see the three of us because, you know, we're all very different. Our looks are all very different, uh, but we are <clears throat> very healthy and, you know, enjoy the life that we've created, use the law of attraction tools and, you know, anything that can make us feel better inside is going to show on the outside. Absolutely. Right? Yeah. And I mean, I've incorporated energy healing and balancing in my life now for uh, nearly 20 years. Uh, and I really do feel I live a balanced life filled with joy and bliss. Mm -hmm. I live in a beautiful part of the country, so that's mm -hmm. very helpful. Now that I actually um, use law of attraction to end up coming back to the island. and. I just, um, I, I do a morning uh, ritual of meditation and yoga, read some inspirational books, and I just find by starting my morning um, with that balancing routine, um, and then at the end of the day, I have a gratitude journal that I write in. Uh, once a week, I write in your book, um, so it's the 52 okay. weeks of gratitude, and when I was reading the, heard about the emotion code and was reading Dr. Bradley's book, I just love the fact that his values fit my values, his values and beliefs fit my values and yeah. beliefs so well. Yeah. Um, so 
As an emotion code practitioner, my clients tell me they feel better, things shift for them, uh, they feel lighter, they, they feel uh, happier, and that makes me feel sexy and healthy and wealthy. Yeah. Because exactly. it works. <laughs> yeah, it works. And it, you know, it, it goes around, right? I mean, it, if we wanted to get into a little uh, woo-woo here, we could talk about the oneness of life, right? And we are a little bit woo-woo gals here. Um, but, you know, the oneness of everything, you know, the more we help somebody else, the better we feel. And chances are they're going to turn around and help somebody else. They're going to feel nicer, happier in, in their life as well. Um, Sylvia Bellini just did a little text here about, about Dr. Christian Northrup. Um, who has a lot to say about age, and I did. I have her book. I didn't think to bring it up, but the last book I read of hers was is uh, Goddesses Never Age, and that's her whole thing. And Helena, you have a little story about her, right? That's right. Uh, my very first event that I put on was I uh, brought Dr. Christian Northrup to Vancouver, and I hired, <laughs> I rented the biggest theater in town that held about 2,500 people, and just put an event together. I think we got about close to 2,000 women out for that particular event, uh, which was just amazing. Uh, and But it was my intention to bring her there. And I remember standing in the wings of the theater, looking out into the audience to the sea of just um, bodies out there and seeing her on stage and realizing I had created this. It was first an idea. But her topic was called flourishing. And what was really interesting was that my business name was Flourish Event Productions. And I was like, wow, that's really cool. But she talked about the mindset of flourishing as a human being, men and women. I actually remember my brother being in the audience. I, uh, he came with my mom and he got so much out of it because men and women can use this information about the mind, about flourishing in the mind, being kind to the body through meditation and maybe some yoga, connecting with nature and uh, the nutrition all together. But it was amazing to see her there on stage. And uh, yeah. Remember the part you and I were talking earlier about when she got out of the cab after trying, traveling, flying, flight delays, et cetera, et cetera, and out she comes. Oh, she, it was amazing. So I, I, picked, um, I uh, great, greeted her at the hotel and she flew, flew from the East Coast and she must have been traveling for 14 hours already. And she steps out of the cab and I know that she'd had a long journey. She looked vibrant, dewy, fresh, um, just radiating and and I know that that was because of everything else that she was doing in her life, that she could show up tired, but still vibrating love energy, pure energy. And, and I was so lucky about six months after that, going to a very small intimate gathering um, in her hometown uh, where she talked even more about flourishing yeah. as a human. Yeah, so she's got lots of books out there. You can check her out on YouTube as well. So thanks very much for that, for Pramelia and Helene. I'm going to come back to you both. But now, Cindy Trost, you have an interesting journey. And it's all about that roller coaster of life. Yeah. <laughs> yes, it certainly is. So what this all means to me, you know, healthy, wealthy, sexy, for me, it's living my own version of life, not according to someone else's definition or rules. And this served me very well in 2016 when I was diagnosed with breast cancer. And I, of course, initially was devastated, did not want to, did not want to hear that when the, the doctor gave me that diagnosis. But, you know, I went out to my car, I cried like a baby for 30 minutes, did the ugly cry. <laughs> and then I said, enough of that. I'm going to go through this experience with a law of attraction mindset. And I'm going to define what this breast cancer experience is because just in the little bit of time that I had been with the doctor, she was already talking about how difficult this was going to be, how this was a lengthy process. I would have to go through a lot of unpleasant experiences and treatments and things. Wow. And I'm like, 
nuts to that. I don't want to know that. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. So uh, right then in my car in the parking lot, I decided that I needed a mantra for the experience. And my mantra was, this is going to be easy. So that was my mantra throughout my entire breast cancer experience. And I shared it with all of the the surgeon, all the technicians, the doctors, the nurses, everybody that I saw, I told them initially on the first time I met them, look, this is going to be easy. That's the way it's going to be. And if you're not on board with that, you're not for me, you know? So, um, so I really defined it on my own terms and used the emotion code to help me go through the process as well. And just was really determined that this process was going to be easy. I wasn't going to fall into that trap of being terrified every day and worrying every day and really buying into the the normal paradigm that society teaches us that, whoa, you get a diagnosis of cancer, this is hard, this is terrible, this is the worst thing you're ever going to go through. It doesn't have to be that way. And also in terms of, you know, being a woman and you know, breasts are very important in our society. They are part of what makes us a female. And, you know, the the doctors work from their medical information. Doctors are not looking to give you a cure, right? Doctors mm-hmm. are there to treat the symptoms and they're generally gonna treat it with a lot of medication and with their thinking because that's all they know, but you chose a different path. And exactly. now going through that, I mean, Cindy, we've had conversations. I, I mean, you and I don't talk about sex or how sexy we're feeling, but I'm just saying, <laughs> you know, you look great. You know, the times we've chatted and talked and, you know, I've never even thought, I, you know, I had no idea that you'd gone through that because you're always so positive and, and so pleasant about things. Do you feel any differently as a woman having gone through that, Cindy? Well, I think that. Breast cancer is certainly something that can be very devastating to a woman, and I think you're treated that way, like this is going to be devastating to you. But for me, it just, it was not devastating. And yes, I have scars from my experience, but Mm -hmm. that's okay. It's just part of who I am, and it doesn't define me. It doesn't make me something, you know. I define who I am and how I'm going to go through life and how I feel about myself. So I don't let scars or anything like that define who I am. And I I think as a female, though, when you go through a disease that is very, um, really important to you and and really affects you as a female, as a woman, I think you do need to really monitor your mindset and your thoughts and your thinking. Because going through breast cancer – I have heard anyway from other women who've had other types of cancer, it's a little different because it really affects your identity or it can affect your identity. Mm -hmm. So I think it's just critically important that if you get any diagnosis or any bad news that you think, oh, as a woman, this is terrible for me. It doesn't have to be. You need to change your thoughts and you can change your thoughts about that. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Sylvia Bellini is just making a comment, Cindy. She says, you're so inspirational. She's used the mantra, this is going to be easy for so many things in her life. And that's so important. And, you know, uh, uh, thank you so much for th- for that, Cindy. And at the end of the show, we'll let people know where they can reach you if, if they want to uh, work with you in some capacity. But, you know, uh, my journey lately, or, well, lately, the last three years has um being that, yes, I'm still running my business, but I'm also a primary care provider. So in being a care provider, um, it's, there, there are times where the last thing I ever, you know, not, not that I think about it, but that I ever would think about myself is that I'm sexy or some days I would just feel so uh, lost and helpless and not able to help somebody that I love, that I can't do anything about it. And then, of course, the wealthy part is the abundance and not really looking there and going to that gratitude every day. So it's so important, that mindset, because we are all going to be facing things in our life. 
there's there there's no doubt about it we are on this human scene to learn and grow and have these experiences um so you know it's important to know that regardless of where you are in this roller coaster of life um you know going up or straight down or whatever there are there the times that you're going to be able to have a different mindset are the times when you become very mindful of what it is you're telling yourself and it's very true if you start to tell people i'm sure you had this experience cindy you don't want to tell people that you know you have uh, cancer or you, you know you have some illness because you're you're quite right that everybody starts to give you advice and remedies and oh poor you and like whoa from a law of attraction perspective that's the last thing you want so I love that what you said having you know the sobbing mess of you in the car for 30 minutes I've been there and you know Michael Lozier on his shows we talk about this all the time the law of attraction have your hissy fit, your meltdown, throw a plate, cry, do whatever you need to do, but do it briefly. And that briefly, you decide what that briefly is. So Cindy had her 30 minutes and, you know, let it out, cry, and then, all right, what, how can I manage this, right? Because everything is with the mind. And Helena's going to talk a little bit about nutrition, but we, the only way that we learn about nutrition is by getting information and getting educated on things that are going to help us but everything goes back to the mind i mean helena and i talk about the conscious mind which is like five to ten percent of doing the work and the rest is in the subconscious so when people are saying things to you you know they're going down into that subconscious and they can really affect you so i love what you said cindy right i mean it's living life on your terms and you define yourself you know is 100%. you know you know we're so inundated with um you know, visuals on TV or YouTube or even music videos now, like some of them, I like the music and then I see the video and I go, oh, seriously, <laughs> I, I like the song so much before, like, does it always have to be about sex and are, are they always, always have long hair and they're always thin and they have no stomach? Like, you know, how does that happen, right? Well, the, I mean, when you're younger, those things are a bit easier once you get into that, you know, different stages of your life. But again, that's a mindset thing too. If you're gonna go through menopause and you think you're gonna end up with all those things, it can happen. Helena, what do you have to say about that? <laughs> what I have to say about that is about how important the mindset really is. And just as a little story, because I love my stories, um, hope other people like the stories too. Um, have you ever heard about the stories about Marilyn Monroe? And yes, so Marilyn Monroe um, was Norma Jean before she became Marilyn Monroe. And she was out in New York with a reporter one day and they were just walking around and she was already famous, but nobody recognized them as they walked on the street. And the reporter was kind of curious about that. And she said, oh, well, that's because I'm walking around like Norma Jean would you like to see Marilyn come out? And she just changed herself energetically and voila, Marilyn came out. And people started being attracted to her and see her and wanting her, uh, her autograph and stuff. And that just demonstrated the power of the mind and the energy shift. And then you can just turn, she just turned it off again. And, and just even with uh, the hypnosis work that I do, when people come in and, and they're really stuck and, and they're not feeling really great about themselves, um, maybe they're, they're, they wanna lose some weight or, or even they're procrastinating or their lack of self-confidence. When we work with the subconscious mind, either through the emotion code or hypnosis or, or vibrational healing, uh, law of attraction, all those things, what we're doing is getting to the root, the root of the belief system. Where did it start? Clean it up, reframe it, so there's a new way of thinking and believing. And I have a great friend, her name is Kim Boudreau. She's a hypnotherapist friend of mine, and she talks about getting your power back, taking your power back, coming home to who you are, that rosebud inside of truly who you are. Yeah, that's my story. <laughs> and Dana, you're on mute. Just such a great story. I remember when you told me that the other day. But it's true. I mean, 
you can feel the sexy, healthy, wealthy, you know, when you get dre dressed up in your, you know, your best clothes and you get your hair done and maybe you get your makeup done and your nails and all of that stuff. And that's you on the outside. Mm -hmm. But regardless, if that on the inside isn't matching what's on the outside, no one's going to see anything except they're going to they're going to be feeling the energy which you're giving off which is most likely going to be not so good if you're not feeling good inside right because that is what gets transmitted and the opposite is true even that little story about Marilyn Monroe if she wanted to be a different Norma Jean she could have but for her she had to have that alter ego and that's how she got into that and we know what a tragedy it was to lose her and how you know, how she just was not happy as Norma Jean in her life. And I think that's really rather sad. And, you know, you see a lot of that. Um, you hear a lot of that with celebrities as well, right? They, they have this persona on the outside, but in the inside, they're dying. You know, and so all of it absolutely stems from that inside. Um, yeah, so I'm just going to read a few more comments here. Or do, did you want to read some, Helena? I would love to read something that um, Sylvia said. Um, and this is another great uh, author or mm -hmm. book is Esther Hicks of Abraham Hicks um, advises that we stick to watching Big Bang Theory, theory or other programs um, and if we have TV at all. So yeah. fun stuff, light stuff, things that make us feel good, which is really great. Uh, Misty couldn't be on our show today, but she's got a good uh, story here that I would like to share um, with you. It, it's in the post as well. She said, Misty says, I remember when I found I, out I was pregnant, I was devastated. The father immediately tried pushing for abortion and then adoption, and I was an emotional wreck. I, I can imagine. It was a tough few months, and then I had a dream of a lady, quote unquote, spirit guide, tell me that if I gave up this child, my life would be a black hole. I immediately woke up and knew I would keep my baby and somehow make it work. And everything that I needed to be a parent was there. So grateful for all the, all the people who were there to support me. And uh, yeah, I've seen Cindy's, uh, sorry, not Cindy's daughter, uh, Misty's daughter. Um, she's done quite a few videos on her, uh, hashtag Alaska Misty. Misty. Um, a lot of videos on her daughter and uh, I don't know how, I don't know if she's 18, 19, 17, 18, 19. I know recently she bought her a guitar and so happy and she does beautiful posts with her. And you know, that's, that's the roller coaster of life, right? As a single mom, that can be a hard route. Again, it's what are you telling yourself up here? And Cindy, I like yours again. I want someone to hashtag this. Cindy, tell us what you what you told yourself. This is going to be easy. All right, I want someone to hashtag that. This is going to be easy. And you know, we're both certified law of attraction trainers and we understand that yeah, there are times when we need to have the briefly and we have the moments and that happens, but this too shall pass. And, you know, the definition of law of attraction is that I attract to my life whatever I put my attention, energy or focus on, whether wanted or unwanted. So even though, as I say, for me as a care provider, um, you know, it's something that I'm lo looking at all day. But, you know, going through this, I mean, I still get my hair done. I wear makeup. Um, I think I look nice. <laughs> no, no, I rephrase that. I, I know I, for me, I feel nice. I feel like I look nice. You, I used to have the long hair to the waist, the whole bit, all of that, short, short, short. I, I, I love my hair now, you know, it took time to get used to, but you know, this is my body. It's a 70 year old body that's been so good to me, so good to me for all these years. So I express that gratitude and you know, I'm grateful for the things that I am able to do caring for somebody. Um, it's not an easy task because these are not my sacred gifts. Um, and that's something else that, that allows us to feel great in life is when we are using those sacred gifts. And uh, you know it when you're using it because your life is meaningful, you're joyful, and uh, life feels good. You feel sexy, healthy, wealthy. Wealthy to me is all about that law of abundance. And abundance is a feeling. So 
it's it can be about the the money that you have but it doesn't have to be the the wealth can be you know once i finish this um it's a beautiful sunny day i'm going to make sure i get down to the dog beach today and i'm going to ask all the ladies what they're doing today to feel good i too have done my meditating i did my yoga um yeah and i didn't do as long the yoga as i usually do but you know what 15 minutes is 15 minutes and i feel better so i don't care what anybody else says about that or you know, well, why do you meditate or journal? You know, they, they say bad things still happen. Well, I say that's just life, right, as humans. And it is all about how are you going to deal with that? And there is no question that regardless of what you're going through, all of us as certified emotion code practitioners can help you release a lot of the, that negative mindset that you had. I know, Cindy, I worked with you a few times to help you out and you've helped me out and Helena's help, vice versa. We've all helped each other out because, you know, we, we know this stuff, but, you know, this is a human existence. It can be a roller coaster. And it's all about how do we deal with it? What do we, what do we tell ourselves? And in terms of telling ourselves, it is important that we take action as well, right? It's what um, Pramelia said. She's engaged. She's out there in her community doing things, making things happen, and takes care of herself you know, with doing the yoga, the meditation, those sorts of things. So, Helena, why don't you um, tell us a little bit about nutrition? Because I know we did that show um, a couple of weeks ago about nutrition. I know you were talking a lot about that, about the serotonin and all that, right. how that so, helps us. Excellent. So, um, just going back to the event, um, one of the other ladies at the uh, event that was speaking um, and her name will come to me in just a moment. Uh, uh, Carolyn, Carolyn, uh, it will come back to me. But she talked about the number one thing that you can do about uh, your nutrition and how you feel. Remove sugar, alcohol, wheat. This was back in 2011, so probably even more grains. Those were the three things because those all affect the inflammation in the body and in your gut, in your in your mind, the clarity of thinking, the puffiness in the body, the movement in your joints, the aches and pains. So nutritionally, first thing is to remove the things that can be causing the inflammation and then adding in the things that actually make you feel good. And that is always starting with your adrenal glands. Your adrenal glands are your base gland. When they are healthy and vibrant, then it, all your other glands are producing the right um, hormones and chemicals. So uh, nutritionally, things that help your adrenals are, are maca or ashwagandha. You can get those in tinctures and in powders from your health food store. Rest, meditation, yoga, connecting in nature, getting some sunlight in the palms of your hands and your feet to create the vitamin D in your body, lifting up your serotonin levels uh, naturally with a little bit of light exercise or rebounding, walking, swimming. Uh, it's amazing just settling your system down how much better your whole system will feel. Right. Thank you. Thank you, Helena. And I was just going to make a comment about um, that person's name, how you forgot that. Yeah. Uh, you know, everybody starts freaking out when they can't remember something, right? I can't remember that name or, uh-oh, you know, immediately we go into this really scary place of this really scary disease that I'm not going not gonna to mention. But, you know, it happens. I think it happens because we have so much information now. You know, we live in a, you know, a high tech world and low touch, as Dr. Michael Bernard Bethquist says. So, you know, we're always on and on about, um, oh, and I just lost my train of thought. <laughs> you I'm know what's, you know what's, that. I know, and you know what's really great is when, and Michael, Michael Lozier will say, and it will come back to me. Yeah, exactly. And, and, yeah. and the more that we dwell on, oh my gosh, I've lost it. I, I, and then the words start to happen. I'm stupid. I, I, I'm like, you know, I'm forgetful. And yeah. Cindy, you would agree. It's like, well, that's just the law of attraction in like reverse. It's like, no, no, it'll come back to me and, yeah. and I'll remember <laughs> it and I'll put it in a post. Yeah, that's great. And uh, Helena will put some of that information in the post as well about um, 
vitamins and and things that you can look for that are that are healthier. Um, so, Cindy, we're going to be wrapping up shortly. But what do you think you might do for yourself today or this week? Have you got something that that you're excited to do, or just an everyday feeling great? Well, you know, I did something just over the weekend. I went to a spa called the Five Star Salt Cave, and oh, yeah, it was okay. so relaxing and it just it, it's so good to breathe in that salty air like the sea air even though you're in the middle of Denver so yeah. I, I did that and, and really enjoyed that a lot and of course I meditated this morning and then later this week I'm flying off to a conference that I'm really excited about That's so I'm, great. I'm looking forward to a lot and are you going to be walking any Westies this week I could be out with a few little Westies this week. I know they're your fave. <laughs> they are. Yeah, uh, we were talking about that one day, and uh, Cindy said, oh, I dog walk a Westie. I go, well, post me a picture, post me a picture. So every once in a while, I get a, a picture of that. Great. Thank you so much, Cindy. Yep. And Cindy, how can people get a hold of you? They can go to my website, Cindy Trost dot com or you can always connect with me on Facebook because I'm on there regularly okay so just look for Cindy Trost on Great. Facebook yeah and you've got some you've got some uh, Facebook live shows that you do as well Cindy I do I have a Facebook live show called the enlightened entrepreneur and I do it about once a week or so so if you just uh, friend me you'll get the notifications <laughs> when my shows are coming up Great. Thank you very much. And thanks for being on our show today. Permelia, what are you going to do for yourself? Well, I was able to do some wonderful beach walks on the weekend. Oh, it was so nice. Sunny, sunny, sunny. And I have a favorite beach walk that I do. So I was able to do that both Saturday morning and Sunday morning um, and took me all the way down to the beach and along we have a beautiful boardwalk that runs mm -hmm. by the beach. So that was fabulous. That's kind of <clears throat> got my, my whole week started mm -hmm. feeling very, very grateful yeah. for the sunshine and that we're coming into summer. Yes. Um, tonight I'm going to go to hot yoga. I try to do that a couple of times oh, okay. a week. And uh, I'm actually having a, a fabulous lunch. Um, in Qualicum Beach with Barb and Kim today. So oh, very nice. Very I'm looking nice. forward to that. That's lovely. Yes. Yeah, you got to give yourself lots of nice things to look forward to. So how can people find you and connect with you? Well, my website is vibrationalhealing.ca. I'm on Facebook uh, under Vibrational Healing and Color Touch Therapy. And I'm also on Instagram, which is vibrational.healing. Lovely. Thank you very much. Thank you so much for being on the show today. Thank you. And it was my pleasure. Yeah, and we'll be doing this again. We'll we'll get the whole, all the divas here. And Helena, how about you? What's what's gonna what's exciting for you going on today? What's exciting for me going on is um, today. Uh, I see my friend Tiffany is watching, and she manages the nutritional center at the community farm store. And I need to pop. I need. I want to pop into the store today to pick up some probiotics for my Westies. Yes. Yeah, she has two. She has two Westies. I have two yeah. Westies. It's it's. Uh, I get nutrients for my dogs because I want them to feel vibrant. And then we're gonna. I'm gonna pick up some uh, some dirt for planting the flowers that I got last week. Oh nice. I get this, Dana. I was doing a conference last week, yeah. and they had all these flowers left over: geraniums and and daisies and and a whole bunch of different wow. things. And they went, Do you want them? To take oh, them home. Fabulous, yeah. So I have a whole bunch of abundance come into my life and um, free plants and flowers that I get to enjoy the rest of the oh, summer. Oh, that's lovely. Yeah, I did my, I got some potted plants a couple of weeks ago, I put them on my balcony, and I and I just love that. So, Helena, how can people get a hold of you? Hmm, they can get a hold of me through my website, uh, flourishhypnosis.com. If you're looking for the emotion code, just go slash. Uh, forward slash emotion dash code. Great, thank you so much. Uh, Sylvia Bellini just made this comment. She, <laughs> she says, thank you uh, so much for sharing. Who needs a Hay House Summit? <laughs> <laughs> That's just great. Yeah, no, this is, you know, it's important that um, 
you know, we, we get out there and we do, you know, use our sacred gifts and do what we love to do. And, you know, it's by doing that, that we contribute to making the world a better place. And uh, as, as humans, you know, we will always have our, our challenges and we all know that it's how we face those challenges and what we tell ourselves and how we move through them because we will move through them. That brings us out to, you know, a side where we've learned something and perhaps we can share that with someone. I always believe that if we are going through something tough that, that there will be, you know, you may be in the darkness, the light is always there. It's just like the sun and the clouds. The sun is always there. The light is always there. Just sometimes we have to reach for it and, and dig a little bit deeper to find it. So um, thanks so much, ladies. I'm Dana J. Smithers. You can find me at empoweredwomeninbusiness.com and forward slash emotion hyphen code if you want emotion code session. If you're interested in uh, learning more about what your sacred gifts are, I have some programs, uh, online program coming up in uh, June for four weeks. If you're interested, just go to my website as well and check that out program slash sacred hyphen gifts. And uh, so that's going to be a wrap for today. And we will post this and love for people to share it. And if you have any questions or comments about anything that we said, we'd love to see them in the post as well. So thanks again for watching. Thanks, ladies, Cindy, Vermilia, Helena. And Helena and I will see you uh, on our Wednesday show. So check us out there. And uh, that is facebook.com TEC Divas which stands for the Emotion Code Divas. All right. So that's it for now. Uh, enjoy your day. Enjoy your week. Um, watch us anytime you need a little bit of inspiration and know that you're never alone. You are never, ever alone. <laughs>